Who is the most clutch hitter of all time? Who is the guy who delivered the most when it mattered the most? Who has the iciest veins of all? In the last three full seasons, the two best hitters with runners in scoring position have been Juan Soto with a 396 average and Freddie Freeman with a 391 average. According to Wikipedia, Pat Tabler is the Mr. Clutch of baseball, up there with Jerry West and Joe Sackick in their respective sports. Tabler did hit 317 with runners in scoring position for his career. Not too shabby. But I have a feeling we can do better than that. So we're going to look at some numbers. Mainly, we're going to look at career batting average with runners in scoring position, batting average in late and close situations, which is an at-bat in the seventh inning or later when your team is either tied, ahead by one run, or has the potential tying run on deck, and batting average in high leverage situations, which is an at-bat at a time in the game where a hit could dramatically swing the win probability for your team. After looking at the numbers, I decided to crown three different champions for this video. A champ for the pre-integration era, or anything before 1947, and a post-integration champ. This is because Baseball Reference, the greatest website in the world, lets us know that there's some incomplete data for clutch numbers in the olden days. So it seemed better to just separate eras and crown two different champs. And just for kicks, we'll crown a post-integration single season champion as well. First, let's look at the pre-integration era. We can fairly easily narrow it down to three players, as there are only three guys who crack the top 10 in all three of our categories. Coming in at third place is Tris Speaker. Speaker played the majority of his career with the Red Sox and the Indians, winning an MVP in 1912. In 1916, he hit a whopping 455 in the late and close situations. And a fun stat about Tris Speaker is that he is still the all-time leader in career doubles with 792. Coming in at an extremely close second place is Ty Cobb. Cobb is the pre-integration leader in the late and close category with a 377 average. And with the bases loaded, he stepped it up even more, hitting 405 for his career. And just a reminder that Cobb is still the all-time leader in career batting average with a 366 clip. With pitchers throwing as hard as they do today, I'll bet this is a record that never gets broken. And our pre-integration clutch champion is Rogers Hornsby. Hornsby is the pre-integration leader in both the runners in scoring position and high leverage situations. And his career OPS in both of those categories was above 1,000. My favorite Hornsby stat is that he hit 400 not just once, but in three different seasons. And he also led the National League in OPS plus 12 times, which is honestly ridiculous. Now, let's move on to the post-integration era. Coming in at third place is Hank Aaron. It was a tough call between Hank Aaron and Ted Williams for third place, but I gave the nod to Aaron because his batting average went significantly up in clutch situations, whereas Williams' average actually went significantly down. I'm not sure why, but I was a bit surprised to see Hammer and Hank make the top three here. Probably because we usually associate Hank Aaron with the home run record and cumulative counting stats, rather than batting average. But he was obviously just a great all-around hitter, and one of the greatest clutch hitters ever, as these numbers show. Of his 755 career home runs, 172 of them were with runners in scoring position, and 16 of them were grand slams. At second place, we have Roberto Clemente. Clemente cracked the top 10 in all three categories, and he especially shines in the late and close category. With the bases loaded, he got even better, hitting 370 for his career. He also hit 400 with runners in scoring position in his MVP season in 1966. And our post-integration clutch champion is Tony Gwynn. And it wasn't particularly close. Since 1947, Tony Gwynn is the leader in all three of our clutch hitting categories. Gwynn hit a staggering 338 clip for his entire career, and his average still somehow went up in all three clutch situations. And with the bases loaded, he hit an incredible 444 for his entire career. Gwynn won eight batting titles, and he probably deserves an entire video dedicated to his crazy good strikeout ratios and bat to ball skills. One of the best pure hitters of all time, and the most consistently clutch hitter of the last 75 years. And finally, let's take a look at the most clutch single season of the post-integration era. There were a lot of great candidates for this award, 
like George Brett in his 1980 MVP season, when he hit 469 with runners in scoring position and 416 in high leverage situations. But after sorting for all players with at least 125 plate appearances with runners in scoring position, eventually I found only three players who posted a 400 batting average in all three of our categories. Third place goes to Ichiro Suzuki in 2001. In Ichiro's very first season in Major League Baseball, at age 27, he took home the MVP award. And with these clutch numbers, it's easy to see why. Ichiro raked for a 445 average with runners in scoring position and a 546 average with the bases loaded. He also won the batting title and led the league in stolen bases. Second place goes to Stan the Man Musial in 1948. Musial pretty much ran the table in 48, leading the National League in almost every imaginable statistic and taking home the MVP. And he hit 449 in late in close situations and 563 with the bases loaded. And finally, our single season Mr. Clutch is Paul Molitor in 1987. I was pleasantly surprised to see Molitor take home this award. Even though he's a Hall of Famer, he doesn't get the attention that many other Hall of Famers do probably because he only hit 234 home runs, and he played for the small market Milwaukee Brewers. But his 605 doubles are good for 15th all-time. And in 1987, Molitor led the league in doubles and runs scored. He only finished 5th in the MVP voting, but in the clutch moments, there's no doubt who the most valuable player was, with the best slash line and clutch moments that I could personally find including a preposterous 461 average in high leverage situations. So we have Rogers Hornsby, Tony Gwynn, and Paul Molitor as our three clutch kings in baseball history. If you made it this far, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.